Hey guys, this is Doug with Fellowship of the Martyrs and Liberty Disaster Relief coming to you from Kansas City um, in Liberty, Missouri. Uh, I'm not particularly a Chiefs fan, uh, never particularly have been much, but definitely not uh, in the last few years. But uh, it's the only sweatshirt I have, so you may see me in it uh, relatively uh, more often this winter as it gets colder. We're trying to keep the uh, utilities down, and uh, the Garrison Center is a great big um, drafty old building, so uh, we try not to uh, heat it uh, if we don't have to. So my office here is a little chilly. Um, but uh, anyway... I haven't been able to make very many videos lately. I wanted to update you on just the situation here. Um, as we've been going through lots and lots of warfare, I'm hearing from lots of other people that love the Lord how much they are being tested and tried and attacked. And It's not the sort of punctuated, once in a while, little attacks, but a, just a daily grinding down. A, just a, a, you know, a, a, okay, like what's going to happen today kind of a thing, financially, relationally you know, uh, whatever with their jobs, with ministries. I talked to uh, a couple of other folks called me in and said, are you, you know, are you hearing this too? Is this what, oh yeah, yeah, even local pastors, congregations that I don't think are particularly shiny, even their folks are really getting it from all sides right now. So um, for us, we've had... Um, a couple of the grocery stores that decided not to give us food anymore. Uh, a couple others that started to cut back because they're being more thrifty. And instead of just giving us every bent can, they'll put them in a shopping cart and try to mark them 50% off. Or, or try and put bananas that are a few spots on them in a bag and sell them for a buck for banana bread or something like that. So our supply is dwindling as people are more careful. Um, even the, the, the guys stocking the boxes that might normally cut a box open and cut a, a, a box of Cheerios or something and we would end up with a box of Cheerios. It wasn't The bag wasn't cut but the box itself was damaged and Americans won't buy it typically. And uh, But even those guys, they're really, really making them be a lot more careful about what they're doing because inventory costs and everything for the grocery stores uh, inflation increasing, their, their bottom line is being affected. So they're being, you would think that they would want to give more to charity uh, so they could get the tax break, but they don't need the tax break because they're hardly making as much money as they used to. When profits are high, then donations are high to try and offset that and keep it from the government. When profits are low, donations are, are not necessary for a profit motive. You may still do it for a, a, a philanthropic sort of a reason, but not so much because you want to avoid taxes on what basically is no profit at all. You're just in survival mode. So here we've been having to deal with a, a seasonal thing where people are spending money on Christmas and, and holidays and travel and whatever and not really thinking quite so much about uh, food pantry or ministry or whatever like that. And um, I've been busy getting all of my books um, uh, converted over and um, ready to go online so they are available or, or should be most all of them available on Amazon.com right now but um, there's a couple of them that may be another day or two before they, they go live but we've got 12 books um, now that um, we'll be promoting I'll have links to those later where you can buy the actual paperback which um, you know, we got one combo book. Well, we'll do another commercial about that. So, anyway, we've had, gosh, one of the houses, the electricity is flickering because there's something wrong at the meter coming into the house, but it's the landlord's responsibility, but he's overseas, and we're not sure what to do about it and don't want the house to burn down and did a little temporary fix, but I don't think that's going to do it. We've got vans malfunctioning. The, the new van, which is... Um, actually less than a decade old um, it qualifies as the, the first time we've had a vehicle donated that was actually from the decade in which it was donated um, anyway it's a Ford van seized up an engine um, so it's scrap we're gonna have to take it down get a few hundred dollars in metal for it um, some parts that we just bought we took back off and returned them um, for it, a broken mirror and some other stuff 
We the old Ford van, that's a 1988, has got leaking brake lines and uh, cylinders in the back, so we're going to have to rework that. The other day we went out and I went out to start it and turn the key, and it just kept on turning and just spun, and so we had to replace the the. Uh, the cylinder there that handles the key and just one thing after another and people that I've been talking to they're like you know this is not the sort of punctuated warfare that you see once in a while this is just a constant daily grinding and uh, I've talked to the Lord about it and I you know I know that the snowball is continuing to roll and we're going to basically need to expect that this is sort of the new normal that there is just going to be a, a continuously increasing level of um, of problems of of creativity that's necessary to solve the problems and listening to the Lord a, a level of warfare as Satan gets more and more cranky and his days get shorter and shorter it's just going to get harder for the remnant but we need to rejoice through it all and endure and um, it's hard. It's hard because I truly, I wake up in the morning not knowing what's going to go wrong, but expecting things to go wrong. Not speaking it. I'm not prophesying it. But I pretty well, you know, uh, a couple days ago, it's like 7.30 in the morning. One of the people staying here, brother, knocks on my door. Uh, hey, my car won't start. i got to get to work. Can I use the van to push start my car? I'm half asleep. I'm like, well, you want my van so that you can ram your car in the bumper and get it going so that you can go to work. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. No. <laughs> I'm like, okay, use the old van. It's already beat up. I don't even care. Go talk to Mikey. It's, you know, you're going to have to wake somebody up to drive it to jam your car in the butt to get you going and you know go go wake up Mikey <laughs> and I guess he did I, I didn't tell that there was damage to the van but it just it, it's like my day starting off with I'd like to hit your car with my car <laughs> you know and then okay the power steering fluids leaking on the Dodge van the 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 ignition on the old Ford van the brake lines on that one uh, it, the 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 mufflers hanging and rattling and and threatening to fall off and we've got to take that and have somebody weld it because it's not something we can fix and yeah, it's just like one thing after the other not to mention people getting sick and uh, Dorothy having a baby congratulations Dorothy and Tyler had Nathaniel David Jaden Hale was born eight pounds so many inches you know two days ago praise God finally got it out of her and uh, anyway she's doing great baby's doing great two pushes and he was out you know God really took care of it and uh, you know we're seeing some beautiful stuff and more people coming and visiting and, and it's just uh, absorbing all of my time and energy the last few videos I've made were late at night right now it's 9 o'clock at night we're getting ready for Thanksgiving today is uh, November the 22nd tomorrow we have a food giveaway we've had to reduce the days that the pantry is open from three days a week to two days a week because of a, a, a harder supply and, and I don't like sending people away because we don't have any food to give them but the boxes it's getting harder and harder to give them a good box of food because the supply is getting harder and harder to come by and the uh, great big pantries are, are trying to kind of stick it to the little pantries and take over more and more of the market share uh, as which is the, the kind of stuff you expect as inflation goes up the economy gets harder the ripple um, the, the ripples continue to go down the, the, the $200 a month in Missouri that the single person gets for food stamps doesn't go near as far as it did a year ago even it just doesn't the inflation on, on, on milk and eggs and produce and everything it continues to roll but the amount that they're given in food stamps doesn't so uh, that means that they're running out instead of running out of food stamps you know a week uh, before they they're due again they're running out of food stamps two weeks before and more and more people all the time are are, are getting food stamps or are on assistance or are coming to food pantries and stuff like that and a lot of the kids that are on school lunches now they've got the backpack program to send them home on the weekend with some food because they're pretty well getting their nutrition at school on uh, 
on the you know assisted uh, meal programs at school and on the weekend they may not eat at all so um, there's just lots and lots of stuff where people are just falling through the cracks um, and the little ministries are having to pick up the slack I try to uh, we're going to assault the town with a little bit more um, information about what liberty is facing and why we need to come together and try harder and and uh, work together a little bit better because I don't want to see food riots in Liberty, Missouri. The best thing I can do for the local businesses, um, for the local economy, is to have this be a place where there's jobs, where there's stuff to do, where there's enough food for everybody, where we're working together, resourcing the farms, the, the grocery stores, the restaurants, all of that stuff, working together so that there's no food crisis in Liberty. The fastest way to get a brick through your plate glass window of your business or your bank or your grocery store and have people looting it is if there's not enough food. Um, now, there's other things that could drive people to do it, like the Occupy movement or uh, you know Hurricane Katrina and people's greed or whatever. But the most likely thing is that uh, there is a food emergency. That's when people are going to get desperate. There's a saying in Spain that says everybody is nine meals away from a revolution. Every country is nine meals away from a revolution. If your family misses nine meals and you have to listen to your kids scream three days, three meals a day, and there's no hope of food, something bad is going to happen. You are going to take matters in your own hands and take to the streets and go get whatever you got to go get. And I think that's fairly realistic. You know, maybe people have enough in their cupboards and their pantries uh, to weather through a, a big winter storm or something like that. But when their pantry's empty and the shelves in the grocery stores are empty and there's no real hope of anything on the horizon, things are going to get desperate. So um, I want to communicate to the city that there's no reason for that to happen here. There's just not. We don't have. Uh, a, a production problem we have a distribution problem and uh, there's plenty to go around if people will share with each as they have a need and act like Jesus so we've modeled that we've shown that it works we've taken care of lots and lots of people um, and uh, dozens and dozens at a time living on less than a hundred thousand dollars a year um, multiple houses um, and feeding three, four, five thousand people a month uh, as we've grown uh, on that income. So there's families of five, families of four can't live on a hundred thousand dollars a year, and we're renting sometimes five, four, five, six properties, feeding fifty, sixty, seventy people. You know, caring for them, washing them, transporting them, plus um, a food pantry, feeding and clothing five thousand or more a month. So. That's God. To multiply that bread that far and feed that many, that's just the Lord. So right now we're going through um, looking at, you know, how to process things that, are, things that are being donated, like a walk-in cooler that was donated, a 10-foot by 20-foot walk-in freezer cooler. I don't have room for, and it's three-phase uh, electricity, which is um, industrial use, um, and we don't have three-phase electric in this building, so it wouldn't do me any good anyway, and a converter would be several hundred dollars. And So the best thing would be just to sell it to somebody that does need it and get a few thousand dollars and convert that to rent and electric and, and water bills and whatever. So um, we're just looking at how to process more of the things that, things that are being donated that aren't exactly things that we would want to give away. You know, big walk-in coolers or, or freezers or... or ATV or things that people are getting rid of because they maybe weren't supposed to have it or, or um, <laughs> they don't really need it anymore and they want it to go to good use but it's it's not like we can just give a homeless guy a freezer you know I mean uh, we need to convert it into turkeys that we can give to the homeless guy so another of the things that's on my schedule right now I've spent all day running around doing the regular food run because the van the only van that's really truly operational I feel like I need to drive myself because it's still acting up and blowing uh, power steering fluid all over the place and we had to go get it muffler welded and other stuff so I've been running around doing a lot of the the kind of the detail work waiting the tables 
that I haven't had to do for a long time because we've had a lot of help here. But uh, also getting ready for Thanksgiving day after tomorrow, we're probably going to feed somewhere around 150 people uh, in the gym uh, here and um, cooking, I don't even know how much, trays and trays and trays of stuff that uh, we don't have the kitchen here to do. So we're going to cook other places, bring it here, keep it warm, serve it all, you know, wear gloves take care of, make sure it's, uh, I mean, there's just all kinds of details, you know, do we have enough little pink sugar packets for the coffee and the tea, and, and well, what about this, and what about warmers, and chafing dishes, and tables, and chairs, it's just layers and layers of, of uh, details, it, we've got lots of good folks here to handle some of that stuff, but uh, there's always a certain amount of it that rolls on to me. That keeps me from answering emails and YouTube messages and stuff like that. Now, uh, praise God, we're going to have a better team of folks to start answering. So if you've sent me a YouTube message or an email in the last three weeks, you probably didn't get a response, and I'm really sorry. We are working on um, delegating more of that because it's just getting to the point where it's impossible for me to answer them all. Uh, we're coming up on 5,000 subscribers, and... They're not like looky loos that just that just show up on the channel because there's something funny or some some kid burping or something. These are these are people that are that are wanting interaction, that are wanting fellowship, that are wanting some answers about how to hear God better and and not not frivolous um, things where you can just okay yeah you know. Uh, you know, here's three little pat answers and go on your way. I mean, we want to be different than churchianity that has treated them like a number. And I grieve that I can't personally answer every single one, and, and, and yet I know that we have really good people here that are that are capable of praying for you and blessing you and, and giving you answers. And if they can't handle it, then maybe they call me in and, and get involved. But... I've known this kind of stuff was coming. I just, I just don't like the idea that uh, I, I couldn't remember everybody's name or, or I couldn't be involved in everybody's healing or their their case and what they're going through and and how their life improves as a result of what God's doing in Liberty or whatever. So, uh, anyway, I appreciate you bearing with us and and I've got some videos I need to make. I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm right now. I'm fairly awake. It's 9:30. Other things are under control and. And uh, we've got all the, I've been working like a dog on the books, uh, getting them all ready for Amazon.com. I think we've got 12 books now that are going to be available on Amazon.com. If you do a search for Doug Perry or Fellowship of the Martyrs, you should get um, a whole bunch of stuff coming up. And it will be probably cheaper to just order a paperback than to print them all on your inkjet printer at home and use a ream of paper. But I'll do a, another video about the books. Um, and uh, we're going to have a sale pretty soon here on those because we just ordered um, a brother blessed us to have some inventory here so that we can just ship them directly to you and uh, we're going to have some DVDs and CDs and other stuff that we can just send out directly from here and, and be cheaper than Amazon and, and it'd be good for the ministry, good for everybody and uh, um, hopefully some of those books will get out there and be passed around where maybe a PDF file um, you know you can't just sit in the bathroom and read a PDF file as easily as uh um, as just having a paperback in front of you or something. So, uh, just lots of details. Um, a brother uh, called me the other day and he had just put one of the original Apology of the World videos that I made four years ago on his channel. And uh, I know him really well. He's lived with us here for a couple years. And, he said, dude, you've aged a lot in the last four years. <laughs> and that is a fact. Uh, now, I know if I trim the beard short and, and uh, get a haircut, I'd look a lot younger. And there'd be, you know, less gray and, you know. <sighs> but, man, I feel old. I've been carrying a burden for a lot of people for a long time dragging this thing uphill 
I tell people this is like pushing an ocean up a hill with a spoon, you know, like swimming in molasses to get anything done around here. There's, you know, hard drive goes on the computer, the the motor seizes up in the car, I, I take off in the morning to go run my day, but somebody used the last bit of gas in the tank and there's not even enough to get to the gas station and I'm stranded on the street and, you know, printer runs out of ink and we don't have enough money for another ink cartridge. I mean, it's just one thing after another. And the last three weeks, it's been just, just crazy. I mean, just crazy. Like every single day, there's some like substantial crisis that is just designed to wear you down. Whether it's physical or financial or or relational or people leaving or people coming or just you know constant, just constant pounding. So. Uh, appreciate all your prayers. Know that we're praying for you. I believe that what we're going through collectively right now is because a breakthrough's coming. And maybe it's the beginning of 2012 and, and turning a corner somehow and entering a, a new season of ginormous badness. Uh, maybe, maybe there's something else that the Lord has planned that is going to start snapping things. I've got some prophetic words spoken to me about the next two, three week period and uh, that big changes are coming, big changes are coming in other people's lives. I don't know what that means or what that looks like. Uh, maybe it's a tidal wave that wipes out the East Coast. Maybe God's going to send the wife that he promised me. Maybe, I, maybe, maybe somebody will say, wow, you know what, that guy, that guy Doug's making some sense. Let's get behind that. Let's run the apology of the world in the local newspaper. Let's print it in every newspaper in the country. Let's 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 get him on our TV show and interview him. Let's I don't know what and then and then it's on like Donkey Kong. You know, it's just a matter of how big a megaphone will somebody give me? Okay, I know that my job is to say whatever I have to say and to say until the altars that man has built are beat into chalk stones. Until they're utterly destroyed, I, I have set my hand to the plow to do whatever I have to do to crush churchianity. And 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 I haven't even got started. I mean, some of the books like the Red Dragon and Do It Yourself City Church book, they are challenging in the extreme to the status quo, and it's hard to get pastors to even give them a glance or even look at them. And uh, one Pentecostal pastor one time, I gave him the Red Dragon book, and then the next day we got together to meet, and he's like, oh yeah, we got four-year-olds get revelations like this. You're just a Baptist that kind of thinks he's hearing God a little bit. He didn't even read it, didn't even whatever. He just thinks, oh, the guy saw a dragon. We got little kids see dragons, whatever. He, he, he didn't, even, didn't even process, couldn't even, whatever. His rulers would not even let him open the book and consider what was actually there and what was actually being said and the, the humongous revelation of how bad things are and why um, that should put people on their face bawling like babies. I know I got the tools. I know I got the revelation. I, I know I hear God good enough. Um, I know that it's just a matter of time until somebody gives me a big enough megaphone that we can start tearing down altars all over the place and it's not just a matter of just destroying for the sake of destruction you've got to pull it down so it can be rebuilt the way it's supposed to and you know I know what it's supposed to look like I know um, anyway I appreciate your support I appreciate your prayers I'm hanging in um, I'm tired, my body's worn, I feel beat down most days, but I go to bed knowing that I'm going to survive another day and that uh, there's nothing Satan can do to stop what the Lord has intended. And uh, it has been probably about the hardest month uh, that I can recall in this walk. I mean, there was sort of punctuated points of wife leaving or business going under or crying on the sidewalk for two days in public but this is just a, a, a grinding daily what's going to happen now kind of a thing that I haven't experienced up to this point in this walk and um, but we're hanging in there so 
<coughs> I hope you are too. Anyway, um, I'm going to try and make some more videos tonight and address some stuff that people have been asking me about for a while. And we'll see see what the Lord does. So try and get a process and upload it. you got to understand, for a, for a 10 or 15, 20 minute video, it's not just a matter of making the video. you got to edit it. you got to put the stuff on the front and the back. you got to save it. you got to convert it. you got to upload it. If stuff crashes. you got to re-upload it. And uh, tags, keywords, whatever. I mean, you're talking an hour and a half for a 10 minute video when it's all said and done. So um, uh, anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. Um, we're going to get... Um, okay, more later. God bless you. Um, uh, keep keep watching. Thanks. More at fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.